the final count. Bro, get out. You know I got open a frisbee today. I'm in a hurry. Yeah, but I got questions for gear tasting. Doth wait. All right, so something I just got in personally is the Kindling Cracker. Um, this was available online from kindlingcracker.com, but I actually bought this on Amazon. Um, can't be prime shipping for something like this too. This is uh, made in New Zealand. So the premise is that when you're splitting kindling the usual way, you have your, your logs that you buy um, wherever you get them from. I mean, maybe you chop them yourself, but when you're chopping wood down to kindling size, you know, you need to continue to split that with an axe and this is supposed to do that for you. So the premise is you put the piece of wood in the top, you hit it with a sledge and then it splits itself and you continue to split it over and over again until you get the kindling size you want. So I haven't even used this yet, I just got this in. I thought it'd be cool to kind of demonstrate this on camera and see how it works. So let's check it out. Okay, so this is just a piece of wood I had in the firewood rack at home. I'm gonna put this in here and try to stabilize it a little bit along that ring and smash the crap out of it with a sledge and see what happens. All right, so it's split it a little bit. Let's see if I can continue to split it up here. That was a miss. So I don't know if I feel like this is really saving much in terms of time or energy, but it is doing what it's supposed to do. So I don't know if it's the wood or not, but it seems like it's not splitting fully sometimes. I'll continue to do this one a few more times here. So, got some decent sized kindling out of that. It's not as small as I would typically go, but I'd say that does make short work of it. Again, you have to have a sledge, so I'm not sure whether this is really a, uh, a super beneficial way to go, but this is nice considering you can just mount it to something, so you could have it mounted outside just to use whenever you're splitting kindling, so kindlingcracker.com, check it out. Just real quick as a follow-up, I wanted to mention something that's, that's happening, so we continue to kind of chop some wood up here and. This is a pretty clean split, as you can see. So the other thing that happened too, and I don't know if it just depends on the wood and the age of the wood, but we were kind of getting this thing happening too. So it would split, and then because this is you know, only you know, maybe six inches deep from the top to the, uh, or sorry, from the bottom to the, the top of the edge here, um, it was, it's splitting like this. So it's getting stuck on that, the, the base basically and it's kind of breaking instead of continuing to split all the way down but then you know on other logs like this you know it did have a good split so like I said it might just be the uh, the age of the wood that I'm working with this is fairly old it's a couple years since this has probably been cut it's just been sitting in a big lumber or a firewood pile in my backyard that's been covered but at the same time it's you know been aging back there so anyway just a couple of quick follow-ups on this
All right, so let's get into some questions over coffee. This first one comes from Sean B, who says, "I'm not familiar. <clears throat> excuse me, not familiar with chess rigs whatsoever. What do you recommend, and what do you use, and what kind of configuration do you have it in most of the time? Obviously, you will adjust the chess rig to fit the profile of whatever activity you're participating in. I'm just looking for some general examples. So that's a fairly loaded question in terms of kind of what I would say to somebody. Um, first off." Um, the, reason, the way that I use chest rigs is just for classes or any kind of, uh, like at our muster I'll wear a chest rig just because I need to carry a lot of shit and it's one of the most easy, or the easiest ways to, to carry a, a fairly significant amount of uh, gear and still have it accessible, um, yet not kind of weigh you down. So I say that with a caveat though because obviously if you put a ton of stuff in a chest rig you're still going to be kind of front heavy versus a backpack which is kind of back heavy. So um, my philosophy kind of in talking about chest rigs versus backpacks is a backpack, you, you know, you have to either take it off or pull it over your head. You know, you, there's some backpack configurations out there where it clips onto a chest rig so you can just pull it over your head and, and work out of it and access stuff. But I'm kind of more of the opinion that a chest rig gives you more versatility in terms of access and that's kind of what it's all about. So a chest rig, a chest rig is great because it's also perfect for classes because you can hold spare mags in there and actually draw out of a chest rig and practice with that. So um, just a, a little bit of the, I guess, kind of the way my mind thinks about chest rigs versus backpacks because it's all about, it, it's all about a load carrying system and that's kind of what chest rigs are. I'd say, you know, they started out, you know, the old, uh, I think it's LBE, the old LBE stuff, so the, the I guess, Vietnam era suspenders and uh, mag pouches and canteens and things like that you wear around a, a you know, a waist belt, um, kind of, I feel like there was chest rigs around a long time ago, I, I'm not as familiar with the history as I probably should be on that stuff, but um, I feel like that evolution from the old L LBE or the load carrying systems kind of came from, you know, the um, the suspenders and the you know, the belt like that. So um, the first thing that I was kind of familiar with back in, you know, I guess the early 2000s was the, uh, the Eagle MLCS stuff. So this is the Rhodesian vest from Eagle. Um, this is kind of what I wore for a long time, kind of back in the day. Uh, this main part of the Rhodesian, the reason, I, I don't know exactly why they call it a Rhodesian, but you can unclip this main part and actually flip this panel down so then you've just got kind of the dedicated chest rig like that or you can have this up for kind of the admin pouch area too. So um, again it's kind of versatility based. Um, that's the MLCS or the Eagle Rhodesian. Um, you know and there's kind of different trains of uh, different schools of thought too about what you should have on. Obviously if you have if you have plates on it's a different story um, you either want a, a carrier that's going to integrate the plates as well as give you the ability to have pouches or dedicated pouches sewn in for spare mags or whatever have you. So, you know, this, it's, like I said, it's kind of a loaded question. There's a lot of info here, so I'm going to try to make it as quick as possible for, you know, time's sake. But um, one thing that I've been kind of experimenting with the last couple of years has been products from both uh, London Bridge Trading, LBT, and Mayflower Research and Consulting. So Mayflower came up with, and I did a pretty extensive review on this system quite a while ago, and I'll link to the article as well for this. But so this is the system that, that Mayflower came out with. So what they did is they, and actually I've got the, well, this is kind of their newer generation of, uh, of carrier uh, chest rigs, but I'll show you kind of how the, the system works. So basically what you have is you have a, a plate carrier in the back here that holds your soft armor and, and plates. So this can fit uh, specific cut soft armor as well as uh, your standard sappy plates. But then what you can do with the chest rig is you can unclip the actual harness itself. And now you've just got the chest rig here and you can dock this in to the plate carrier, if you don't drop it all over the place. So you can dock that in and now you've got kind of a plate carrier chest rig combo. Um, so this is, this is kind of Mayflower's newest iteration of their, of their chest rig configuration. 
And the beauty of this is not only does it give you the versatility of kind of multiple pockets, um, but it gives you the ability to change out these mag pouches here. So you can fit, uh, with these different inserts, you can fit AK mags, standard 5.56 mags, and I believe also 308 mags. So as you can see, these carriers are removed and this is just based on whatever mag platform you have into these pockets. Or you could completely seal these up if you're not running any kind of uh, ammunition or mags or firearm and just use these as kind of a general admin pocket like that too. So I really like the way that they've, uh, they've what they've done with this chest rig. So, you know, another thing too is, as I mentioned, the LBT stuff. So this is kind of the, I believe this is the 1961 stuff. So this is kind of another thing that I've been experimenting with as well as running the, uh, the 1961. So this is kind of dedicated, uh, this is, this is purpose built for uh, comms batteries, I believe, or the big pockets, or you can use these for ammo for like a 60. Um, you can, or a saw, you can basically, uh, I don't have the inserts there, but they pop up, pop onto here, so you can feed ammo out of those. Um, I believe these are grenade pouches on the sides and things like that. So it's very purpose built for specific, uh, specific loadouts for the military, but at the same time, all the pockets really give it more versatility too. Um, I've really kind of been, been happy with that. But again, it doesn't, it doesn't have that same versatility the Mayflower stuff has. You can't kind of undo the, the straps and then dock in onto a plate carrier. So if you are running plates, that, you know, that's something too. But I do like also their kind of built-in hydration system. So this just kind of clips into the back piece and you know, I'm kind of moving fast through this stuff and, you know, maybe on a, uh, a dedicated review on ITS, I can kind of get more into the, uh, the chest rig stuff. But that's just an example of, uh, of some stuff that, that I use personally. Um, as you can see, I've got quite a different, <laughs> a bunch of different chest rigs. That's another 1961. Um, and then the, so the zipper that both the, uh, the new generation of Mayflower and the LBTs have can actually help kind of fillet out the pockets. So meaning if you've, you've got a big loadout on your chest and you need to get low onto the ground, you can unzip that and spread it. Um, or it helps in an emergency situation. If you're you know, dealing with Marops type stuff, you can actually you know, unzip the chest rig to get out of it if you had to kind of cut it away, basically, if you were hung up on something. So just a few little, uh, few little notes on chest rigs. So sorry if that was a little long-winded, but um, like I said, I'd like to follow up and do some more stuff with this because I think there's a lot of info on chest rigs that's around. So make a cool article. All right, so this next question comes from uh, Thunder Chicken, who makes great beer, by the way. It's a personal friend of ours from ITS. But with mustard coming up, I'd love to hear y'all's, you can tell he's from Texas, opinion of some newer MRE companies you've been trying out. So MRE stuff. Um, this is actually kind of a cool topic. Um, XMRE has recently sent us some stuff. The, uh, and I've talked about it before in a gear tasting, and we actually did a kind of a review along with some other backpacking meals we kind of threw in MREs and this was the MRE we chose to include which was uh, from XMRE. So what I want to do is kind of compare XMRE stuff to um, an actual military MRE just to kind of show you the difference of what you get. Um, with XMRE they're still using the actual MRE ingredients from companies like Warnick that actually make the military MRE surplus. So um, let's open both of these up and I'll kind of show you the difference. I'm actually a, a really big fan of what XMRE is including. Um, however, it's, it still differs a little bit from the traditional military MRE. So they both got these uh, heavy duty uh, kind of tubular plastic bags that they include, which are great for repackaging MREs. If you've ever seen our video on uh, basically I hope we have a fucking cut point. Field stripping. Yes. Field stripping MREs. Um, you've known that we've kind of advocate just taking the contents out of the uh, the bigger package, throwing away the stuff that's really not necessary, just kind of give you basic sustainment. You can roll it back up in the uh, the bag, because and then duct tape it. So, all right. So again, this is what that includes, and it's all kind of in its own um, individual bag. Um, whereas the XMRE is kind of all loose, 
Um, that's just one difference already. Um, so let's go ahead and open this stuff up. This is an older MRE that's been sitting in my truck for a long time, so it's honestly not something I'm probably going to eat anyway, just because of the, the heat. Um, MRE, MRE's shelf life depends on the temperature it's stored at, so if you store them in heat, you really only get about a year or two before stuff starts going bad. So, um, all right. So main entree, I'll find the main entree real quick in both of these. So as you can see already, the main entree um, for this MRE, and I think that the actual military suppliers for MREs have started packaging things differently, which is why there's a difference already that you can see. So they started including this, uh, this sleeve for cooking because once you cook MREs, um, you can take this container basically put it in the heater and I won't get into that, but they both come with a heater, just like that. If you've ever uh, used an MRE heater, you know that they work like crazy and you can heat multiple things with them. So you'd put it in the heater and then stick it into the sleeve to cook it in versus one of these boxes. You put it in the heater and then have to put it back into the box and lean it up against a rock or something uh, to cook it. So that's the difference in entrees. We've got the heater. Um, they both come with a beverage bag, and this is for making the beverage that comes in these. So this, come, this one comes with a tropical punch. This has a lemon lime, so basically the same thing. Um, then we've got lovely wheat snack bread, and this also has wheat snack bread. So same thing. Um, this is made by Sterling Foods. This is made by Sterling Foods, so kind of current version, probably older version. Um, then we've got a Sterling Foods Oatmeal Chocolate Chunk Cookie versus the, I guess you got a toaster, a chocolate chip toaster pastry in the military one, as well as a, wow, that's old, <laughs> old package of Skittles. Um, so there's your kind of, uh, I guess, your dessert. So this is another thing that you get with military MRAs is you've got this package of I guess your accessories and that on this. Okay, so real quick, jalapeno cheese spread. It's pretty good. First peanut butter. So most MREs come with either cheese spread, peanut butter. Um, most of them don't come with like peanut butter and jelly and things like that. So um, one difference too is before I get into accessories. So this one comes with applesauce. This is kind of the, the snack, I guess, that comes with it versus a dry fruit mix packaged uh, by XMRE here, and that's their own packaging. So they're packaging that themselves. So I guess right now the big difference is the candy versus the chocolate chip cookie and the extra inclusion of a toaster pastry. So that's the big difference right now between those two. Um, they both have the signature brown MRE spoon. And in case you've never eaten an MRE before, um, they either are enjoyable or uh, stand for meal refusing to exit. So there's both the spoons. This is individually wrapped um, once you open this. So and let's finish breaking down the accessory package. So this is a Chili Mac MRE. This is the main course here is a Mexican style chicken stew. Um, one thing with the military MREs is they all come with matches. These are kind of uh, damp climate matches. Um, there are no matches in the XMRE. Um, there's some toilet paper folded up in the military MRE um, versus uh, just a napkin, I guess, to wipe with um, your hands or other things. Then you've got a coffee mate in the XMRE. Um, you've got no coffee mate or no coffee period in the uh, military MRE, but the military MREs do still come with coffee and uh, creamer sometimes you can make ranger pudding and things like that with but so they in the military one they included spice cider in there as a replacement for the coffee um, both have salt salt and pepper uh, you don't have pepper in the military one got some sugar along with coffee in the XMRE uh, moist towelette in both of them uh, military MREs have gum so they don't have gum in the XMREs and this is just a fret or red ground red pepper in the military MRE, and you don't get that in everything either. So really military MREs vary in what they include, but 
Most of them come with uh, kind of the basics in the accessory packet, like they all come with matches, toilet paper, uh, gum, the spoon, and I think the moist towelette. And then you get salt, pepper, coffee, spice cider, things like that is just the difference depending on which entree you have. So just a quick breakdown of the military emery versus ex emery. Um, I know there's more than you asked for, but thought it would be cool to show the difference. Hey, thanks for watching Gear Tasting, where we show you what we're up to and currently evaluating at ITS headquarters, and we answer your questions as well. So to get your question on our next episode, use the pound tag Gear Tasting on any of the social media outlets. We'll find it, make sure we get it on the next episode. Thanks for watching. All right, so this is an extremely old MRE. These, uh, Rob told me that they stopped making lime Skittles a long time ago, so um, I think this date right here means that they're made in 2004, so it's like 11 year old Skittles. I'm gonna do it. It's not that bad. You want one? Yeah. <laughs> All right, just in case you were wondering what a 11 year old MRE looks like, my mom would be upset because I'm going to waste food. I'm not going to eat this. <laughs> you can tell it's old because the outer foil is separating from the inner foil. Kind of scared to look. It actually smells edible. 11 years old. <laughs>